Hi everyone, Al Sack here. Um, I'm going to do a short video on what I've titled Complexes Trauma. Um, taken information from Jung's Map of the Soul. This is by Murray Stein, 1998. Taken information from medicinenet.com, uh, appliedjung.com, Society of Analytical Society, and then of course my take on things. Um, I'm not a Jungian, so, you know, some of this um, is a little difficult for me to uh, really wrap my uh, my mind around, but I'm going to try and do it anyway. It's going to be short, uh, but it has some interesting information in it, I think. Okay, so the American Psychological Association defines complexes uh, as a group or system of related ideas or impulses that have a common emotional tone and exert a strong, but usually unconscious influence on the individual's attitudes and behaviors. Another one, complex, meaning a personal unconscious cluster of emotions, memories, perceptions, and wishes organized around a common theme. Okay, so if you understand that. Now, the origin of the complex is frequently a so-called trauma. Uh, an emotional shock or some such thing that splits off a bit of the psyche. Now, constellation, okay, the creation of a psychologically charged moment, a moment when consciousness uh, either already is or is about to become disturbed by a complex. So the outward situation releases a psychic process in which certain contents gather together and prepare for action. Okay, so if we talk about pushing someone's buttons, we're talking about pushing buttons of a complex loaded uh, area. So if I push that complex loaded area, I'll get an emotional uh, reaction. Uh, you know, I constellate a complex, if I'm getting this right. And I remember a client of mine mentioning how her husband, a Vietnam a veteran would get sweaty palms um, like on the 4th of July and you know New Year's Eve and things like that when, when fireworks uh, were going off. The fireworks triggered this this uh, complex of psychologically charged um, moment. Okay? Um, so when a complex is constellated, the individual is threatened with a loss of control over his or her emotions and to some extent uh, behavior. Now, there are a lot of different types of complexes. You've probably heard a lot of them, but for example, you know, the uh, Oedipal complex, inferiority complex, superiority complex, uh, martyr complex, you know, and uh, the list goes on. So, it's also interesting, just a couple more things, um, like shared traumas make for shared complexes. So sometimes these are generational. So for example, you know, the depression era uh, mentality. And I, I assume we could take this to several instances such as being directly involved in, uh, you know, 911 being on the ground and, you know, there at uh, 911 um, or being in war uh, in general, things like that, or being in some natural disaster. Um, you know, and it's interesting how having gone through shared um, traumas or complexes uh, facilitates a sense of bonding with people. There's this, this automatic uh, connection uh, with them. Um, okay, finally, one more point. Um, it's that these complexes or traumas, if you prefer, can be intergenerational. So, for example, uh, substance abuse or child abuse can be passed down from one generation uh, to the next. You know, and children are like sponges and parents are models. Uh, so how we act as parents definitely plays a part in our children's lives. So children of parents who are alcoholic um, are at greater risk for developing a problem uh, with alcohol when compared to the general public. That's just the way the statistics uh, 
play out. Okay, so that is it. Uh, some I thought some interesting information about uh, complexes. Again, not my area of expertise, but um, an area that uh, is definitely uh, interesting. And that's it for now.